Hey guys, I'm gonna show you something here. Pretty quick video, but it's on, but it's a safety video. It is uh, cab tilt cylinders. So what I want you guys to realize is that these cab tilts for these big risers, they will step away a little bit. You can see the, the risers on these log shovels. Um, you don't want to mess around with them. So if you're going to be doing anything with a cab tilt riser, you want to make sure, uh, one, you got bolts in the cab. Two, uh, unpin your cylinder if you're going to be messing with it. <clears throat> as far as operation, previous other people working on it, things like that, if you need to bleed that cylinder. Um, you know, we don't, we don't get the experience without screwing up, and I will tell you that I've screwed that one up. So um, those of you that know, <laughs> you know. Anyways, uh, I'm going to flip the camera around here and I'm going to climb up in this riser and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. But um, you don't want any air in these risers, especially these rear entry cabs too. They're really bad because if you don't put the cab bolts in them, they're going to, and you just, you know, you just walk around the yard or whatever, <clears throat> you're going to start to see, they're going to start to float a little bit, right? They're going to have a little, they're over center pretty easily. The side entry cabs, they sit back a little bit farther, so they're not quite as bad. But as far as the rear entry cabs go, they are the ones that really get to me. Um, if you don't put cab bolts in them, it doesn't matter what brand. Um, a Dill, John Deere, Link Belt, Caterpillar, Tiger Cat. I don't care who builds the cab. I don't care who builds the riser, whether it's Pierce, CWS, it doesn't matter. Um, you guys uh, stick the bolts in. And, or, uh, you know, there's a couple others that have pins that go through the side that, uh, you know, that, that's another deal. Just, it's just a safety precaution, man. Um, there you, I know you guys have heard some stories and you, you know, you hear the stories, you're like, ah, oh, that's never going to happen to me. It's going to happen to you if you don't take it seriously. So that's just what I'm, I'm, I want to get through to you guys, the young guys coming in. You just need to know that we're not joking when we tell you guys put cab bolts in every time you walk it off the low bed make sure they're on in before you walk it off the low bed you go to walk it on the low bed take the bolts out after you're on the low bed so all right guys i'm going to turn the camera around so i've already i pulled the pin out which just goes right there there are uh a cab bolt there and there's a cab bolt behind the junction box. We, you know, they're stored, a lot of times they're stored here. They'll be stored up, you know, like on the front somewhere. But what you need to do is you need to look for these threaded holes, uh, welded in nuts, things like that. And there'll be cab bolts in there. So the other thing is once you get the pin out of that cylinder, Pick that cylinder up and put a block of wood, rubber block, anything. Get it up in the air so that you can extend that cylinder out. And if you don't have enough room in the riser for what you need to do, take the pin out of the back of the cylinder. Take that cylinder and lay it outside the door here. Okay? Just lay it outside the door and run that cylinder in and out outside here. Guys, this is serious. It's something that if you get an air pocket in this cylinder, um, you know, when you're extending, you're pushing. And when you're retracting, you're pulling, right? Well, when you go over center, the weight of that cylinder, you have to overpressurize this side of the circuit, right? So this side of the piston. Currently, the piston's clear down here in the cylinder. So as it moves forward, this is all going back through to the tank. And when you're lowering the cab, you are actually pushing more pressure on this side that overpressurizes this. And that's how you release your load lock. So if you have an air pocket in there where you can't actually lock that load and it can't hold the cab, that cab's gonna go over forward and it's gonna go over forward very violently. So seriously guys, just, uh, <clears throat> take it from me it happens it happens faster than you can even imagine it will happen in the blink of an eye and you won't even know 
that you did anything wrong until it's over. So, uh, especially on a on a machine with a with a cab that is uh, over center really bad. Sorry for the in and out. I'm trying to woo 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 woo. Trying to put some tools away here. We pulled the motor out of this one. This one's got a dead short in the motor for the pump. So I'm trying to put some tools away while I talk to you guys. Um, so again, we're pretty serious about it, guys. Just uh, th think about yourself. Think about your customers. Because I, I will tell you this. Those, cell, those cabs are not cheap, and when they go over, they tend to bend and break stuff. They tend to snap the safety cable. They snap the end off the safety cable. I've seen them go over in a slow go over. I've seen them go over where they actually blow the cylinder piston off the end of the rod, and then the rod comes out of the cylinder. The mechanic didn't do anything wrong. It's just that that machine, it went over a little bit faster than it needed to, and the cab weighed a little bit more, and the end of that piston was bad. It's, it's happened. Thanks for watching. You made it to the end of the video. Subscribe, click the bell, comment, do everything you guys do. You know what to do. Um, and I appreciate everything you guys comment. I try and either either like it. I try and comment back. I try and stay up on that for you guys. I apologize if, if I've missed any of you guys in any kind of comments or anything like that. And But as always, have a great day, be safe, and God bless.